Hello folks, it's Anahita Rao and I am here today to speak about the first eclipse of this year. Now the eclipse axis has shifted to the dynamic signs of Aries and Libra. So we can expect the drama the unpredictability and the faded events to impact these areas where these signs fall in your chart. And here you will likely undergo a long pending transformation, especially in the ways that you relate to others. Yeah, so let's talk about April's solar eclipse now. <laughs> So we have a solar eclipse taking place in Aries on April the 30th at approximately 9 p.m. UTC in the nakshatra of Bharani at approximately 16 degrees. Now Rahu will cause this eclipse, though it will be far enough from the eclipse, it will be in 12 degrees, it will be 12 degrees away from the eclipse in Kritika. Now, with all the new moon cycles, the moon, of course, is the darkest at this time. It's just turning from waning to waxing. So Amavasya is thus considered a good time for reflection, a good time for introspection and going inward. And this is especially the case with this eclipse, as we have just seen all the slow moving planets change their places especially Saturn. Saturn, in fact, changes its place just hours before this particular eclipse on the 29th of April. Now, if we want to understand what to expect here, we need to see the strength and position of Venus and Mars. Mars being the rule, ruling planet of Aries, and Venus, of course, being the controlling planet of Parini. In many ways, uh, this Eclipse will mark the beginning of a new life chapter for people, especially for those people who have Aries or Aquarius moon placements. Aries is, in any case, the first house of the natural zodiac. So many people will experience new beginnings now. And as I said, all the major shifts have taken place in April for a completely new planetary landscape. But with both Uranus and Rahu impacting this eclipse, there may be some anxiety and uh, jittery feelings. Moon in proximity to Rahu could also cause you to be sensitive to your environment. Um, emotions can run, run high with strong reactions, some could be out of character. And here Saturn also aspects the moon, suggesting some caution with actions rather than the normal charging ahead energy of Aries. This is further augmented by Mars also being in Aquarius at this time, getting the gaze of Saturn. Now we finally left the Kal Sarp Yoga behind with Mercury moving into, Ari into Taurus. So many people would be consolidating their recent life shifts, recent life changes, and be aware of that new life chapter about to start, but you may not want to yet plunge into action. Though Uranus close by suggests that sudden shifts could take place now, some kind of out of the blue events. All planets are in strength now. Venus is exalted with Jupiter, though extremely close. For those who went through big relationship shifts, there could be a chance of meeting new people now. For those that made compromises in relationships, they would be feeling more optimistic with their partner now. Though, with Neptune also close to Venus at this time, you could be seeing what you want to see rather than facing some uncomfortable truths. It could be a time when some uncomfortable relationship matters would have been swept under the rug rather than confronted or resolved. It would be, however, a good time for admitting 
your mistakes, if this applies to you. Being that um, both Venus and Jupiter are in Uttarapadra, implying some sacrifice, perhaps some sacrifice in relationships. Um, Venus in Leo in D9 with Jupiter, Moon and Sun, aspected by Rahu, is also not a comfortable place for Venus. So there's a lot of focus on outward appearances at this time, especially with relationships. Mars's 11th position from this solar eclipse is a formidable position. Whatever you start now could see maximum growth and positive results. With Saturn newly in Aquarius, there could be some caution and restraint to that Mars impulse, but, but as I said, planets are in dignity, so this caution will prove to be a good thing. Um, new pathways for growth will open up depending on where Aries and Aquarius fall in your chart. And helpful and supportive people could also come your way to aid in this path. Not only from familiar circles, but even more so from places far away from you. Venus being strongly placed in Pisces is too close to Jupiter at this time, and um, but the Venus impulse will dominate here. So it's a good time for learning any new healing modalities, giving to charity, going on a holiday somewhere by the sea especially. Um, and as I said, many people will be ready to start a new phase of life, a new chapter now. Of course, this eclipse directly impacts Aries and Libra, but also those who have personal planets close to the eclipse degree. So, as usual, if you have a planet in Parani or if you have a planet in Vishaka, then that area of your life will be activated at this moment and could see a new opening, a new beginning. Um, this eclipse falls into the first pada of Parani, which is the Leo Navamsha, suggesting potential for growth. If you are starting a new life path, a career, a project, or even a relationship, you're going to be very focused on this. Um, any new creative endeavor would be blessed now, this is, um, this is a very action-orientated bada of, of parani. Anything you create to inspire others or any cause that you take up at this time to help others will prove to be fulfilling for you in the long run. It's also a good time to plan to have children if you wanted to do that. Um, parani, of course, is um, its death and transformation. Um, usually for something new to be born, something first has to die. Now this can happen, and if you, let, if you let it go now, it will be a good time to do so. Because in the first Vada, where this eclipse takes place, there's a chance to create, to inspire, and to forge a new life path. But if you wait till Rahu moves into Parani, then the death and destruction will happen perhaps unwillingly and unexpectedly. So see if you have planets falling in Parani. So for instance, if you have Venus there, this impacts relationships. If you have Moon there, it impacts your domestic situation. If you have Sun there, it impacts your life path or perhaps your image. So let's talk a bit about Parani, where this eclipse is taking place. Parani supports the following activities, creative and spontaneous activities, austerities and sacrifice, starting a spiritual practice, filing a lawsuit, especially if it's for divorce, um, activities requiring the severing of action. Yeah. Parani's deity is Yama. So death and destruction are associated with this nakshatra for that reason. Um, there could be an ending of a life chapter now and a beginning of a new one. Deep transformation is actually the key characteristic of Parani. So the changes you make would be big ones and would have a lasting impact with Saturn's aspect there. This eclipse can bring swift and sudden events and changes. Parani is actually, it's, it's kind of a dichotomy in that it symbolizes the yoni also, which is the ability to create, as well as death and destruction. So, being a nakshatra of extremes in the sign of Aries, it can very quickly facilitate transformation pertaining to where it is falling in your chart, 
or what planet it is impacting in your chart. So see where Aries falls from your moon and your lagna. It is here that you can reinvent your life. I've made remedies um, videos for each planet and for the eclipses I, I always say that the best remedial me measures you can take is to strengthen the moon. This can include simple things like keeping a light schedule one week before and after an eclipse, drinking lots of water, so keeping yourself hydrated is important, doing prana pranayama and meditation because that way you're connecting with the breath, spending more time with your family, spending more time at home, any sort of nurturing activities because it's generally advisable to go inward at the time of eclipses especially with the new moons as the as the moon is the darkest then normally at eclipse times of course it's difficult to plan right I mean we can we can say you know proceed with caution or we can say do this do that but often what happens is that that the events events and circumstances just kind of spiral without without any warning that's kind of the essence of, of the eclipse and the essence of, of the nodes. So you can either take a passive approach and keep your schedule light or you can surrender to what is coming your way. Especially with an Aries eclipse we may feel very restless and tempted to take lots of action. Um, so well that's all for now folks. Um, if you like the video don't forget to hit the subscribe, like and share button. All the best. Cheers.